for the second part of this series I'm gonna be dealing with the base uh, some more work on the post clamp and the indicator clamp also so I did end up making the decision at some point to start over on the base and actually use a CNC mill um, mostly to do the shape and to deal with the harder material. I ended up using a piece of 4140 pre-hard steel um, and really the CNC work here took me all but an hour to do and it actually came out pretty nicely you can tell from the sparks during the cutting that the material was quite hard I'm not exactly sure what 4140 is when it's pre-hardened I think um, in the 30s maybe 40s low 40s Rockwell um, here's the finished pass around the outside I was using a pretty dull end mill I also decided to put in the hole for the post which I was gonna do at home on the shore line but I figured while I had it in there and on the bottom I did leave three raised surfaces uh, for the stabilizing feet and I touched them up on the surface grinder I think I probably took off three tenths four tenths total uh, the CNC made the part very parallel I was actually impressed with how well that came out um, it was just the one center foot didn't quite clean up on the very first pass so I took it down about another tenth and then uh, it started to, to clean up But I am glad that I went with the three feet. Uh, my original design was to have four, and I had been told that <clears throat> three is a much better um, choice for a precision tool like this. So I took the advice. And then uh, just for pure aesthetics, I decided to surface grind the opposite side it's hard to see but I did engrave my name and the year on this top surface while I was in the CNC just to add a little extra flair to it and then on to finishing up the post clamp well not quite finishing but adding a few more features this is what I worked on in the first video primarily was all dedicated to this part so this hole here on the side that I have to spot face ends up being for the um, actual clamping screw that you tension to clamp this to the post so I'm using a 3 8 end mill and just spot facing until it cleans up all around. Then of course I have to do a tap drill. Or 1032 I believe it ends up at and then here I'm setting the body diameter drill to about halfway through and using my indicator 
I can set the indicator at zero once it's at that depth. As the drill goes down, it approaches the tip of the indicator and eventually it'll begin to register a reading on the indicator. And then once it reaches that zero point, um, the, the drill can be backed off. Now I'm moving on to the actual indicator clamp, which is a much smaller piece. Um, again, I went with A2 tool steel. It's a pretty tough, stable material. Not very uh, friendly to machine, especially on a small, small mill like mine. But with the right formula for cutting, it's not too bad. This is all just squaring, uh, bringing in thicknesses, overall lengths. This piece was at much closer to size, to final size, so I had to take a minimal amount off of each side to actually bring in the, the sizes. Sometimes it can be tricky getting parts to seat in, in the little vise. But uh, a little bit of persuasion. Bringing in the overall length, or at least finishing one side, some side milling cuts. And in this case, climbing and conventional milling really makes no difference. Um, the cuts were so light, three to five thousandths of an inch. This is really the first real feature on the part, aside from the width and the length and the height, um, where I'm actually cutting a step into the part. So I have my indicator set at the location on the side of the part there, and um, just milling in that feature. Opposite of that feature are the holes that will be used to mount the flexure spring that connects the indicator clamp to the pose clamp. So that's what these holes end up being. They're going to be tapped for 632 and there's two matching holes basically in the post clamp. This hole here is just a clearance hole for what will be a saw cut to separate the indicator clamp. More layout. Again, a favorite thing of mine to do. Broke out the veneer height gauge for this. You can tell I haven't used it in a while because there's a little bit of rust on it. Um, it does need to be cleaned off. I'm a little more climate controlled now, so rust shouldn't be as much of a problem anymore. And then cutting some more steps in the side. This is just relieving the area where um, the indicator will be placed. So really it's just making room for some of the knobs and um, some of the features of the indicator. None of this so far is really ultra precision. However, I do often um, try to work within a few thousands of an inch. And the way to do that is with constantly measuring, checking, double checking. I use a lot of indicators. On occasion, I'm um, using indicators on multiple axes on my machine to show me that my setup's not moving, that I'm at the right locations, and that everything's working as I want it to work. And so far with this machine and with the setups that I use, I've had very little issues, if any notable issues, 
with any sort of instability. So these holes here are again part of the indicator clamping mechanism. That part will be sawed apart. This is my way of indicating the part to 45 degrees. I roughly set it and then with a V block that has a 90 degree groove in it I just indicate across the top face to get a zero reading or just about a zero reading. I think I end up getting within about a thousandth of an inch. So the angle does not have to be even that close so this is a perfectly fine method for it and with my sort of limited resources in my home shop um, this seemed like the quickest way to do it and then milling the face to be at 45 degrees is just some y-axis cuts again I don't want to use the x-axis to make these cuts pretty much for fear of the part moving this operation was where the precision really began um, the the slot should be pretty well centered what I'm really doing here is preparing the the center portion to then be cut into a dovetail so I want to center this slot I believe about 195 thousandths wide and I'm using a 3 16 end mill I want it to be centered within a couple thousandths of an inch within this feature for a couple reasons I want the indicator to locate on center to my setup to the axis of the post and for aesthetics I want the indicator to be centered about the entire unit so I just take cuts back and forth across what I found to be the center and then I proceed eventually to measure back and forth and slightly move. There is an indicator attached to the table just behind the vise. You can't really see it in the shot um, and I have that set to zero which represents the center line. And so I can control the, the y-axis compensation in either direction to get this slot precisely centered. And now the dovetail. And I'll link up to some Instagram posts where I actually made this cutter. This is a homemade cutter. I made it out of some O1 tool steel. I turned the dovetail profile and then I filed the clearance onto it and then I hardened it and actually used it on a previous project and it's still fairly usable for being homemade it's it's not too shabby it did take a lot of cuts and it is sort of noisy but it ended up working out pretty well I'm quite happy with the results. The fit to the indicator is not tight, but it's not sloppy. And once I use a slitting saw to separate this, um, you can manipulate that fit a little more so. But all in all, I'm quite happy. And again, I was able to establish that zero center line and center up that dovetail pretty, pretty precisely. So thanks for watching again. And um, next time I'll be doing some boring, some slitting saw work and getting even closer to the end of this project.